Here's an example. f of x is equal to 17x cubed. And we're told to find the derivative of f inverse of x at x equals 17. So we're not trying to find the derivative of this function at x equals 17. We're trying to find the derivative of the inverse of that function at x equals 17. Now I'm going to solve this two ways. I'm going to solve it graphically and algebraically. And I think you should understand both solutions. I'll do the graphical solution first since I think it's the most intuitive. And then we'll see that the algebraic solution gives the same answer. So first graphically. Uh, let's just make a sketch of this function. f of x is 17x cubed and it's pretty easy. It's just a real, it's a cubic curve that gets real steep real quick. And we know that it goes through the point I'll mark it here. It, it goes through the point 1, 17. That we're sure of. Okay, now think about the inverse of this. The inverse function is going to look something like this. And it will pass through the point 17, 1. So this, this, um, picture is not drawn perfectly to scale but it does show the important points that we need and you can see that these two functions uh, this is f right here and this is f inverse those two functions are a reflection of each other across the line y equals x and notice the switching in the x and y values this is the point 1 comma 17 and this is the point 17 comma 1 now let's find the slope of function f right here. So let's look at that. The slope of f at 1 comma 17. Okay, that's going to be pretty easy. Let's find the derivative f primed. Now notice that's not f inverse, that's f primed. f prime of x is, uh, let's see, 17 times 3 is 51. So it's 51 x squared. So we can find f primed of 1. That will be the slope of function f at an x value of 1. And that will just be 51. So what we just did, we found the slope right there. It's pretty steep right there at that point. Okay, now here's the reasoning. If the slope right here is 51, then the slope of the inverse function right there is 1 over 51 and we're done. That's our answer. I'll scroll down just a little bit to have some room to write it. I'll say the slope of f inverse at 17, 1, and that's what we were trying to find, is 1 over 51. And that's our answer. And we, we used the fact that the slope of a function at a given point is always the reciprocal of the slope of the inverse function. Or you could say it the other way. You could say the slope of an inverse function is always the reciprocal of the slope of a given function at the corresponding points. In this case, this point is the point that corresponds to that point in that those points are reflections of each other across the line y equals x. Okay, now let's do the same problem algebraically. So here's the algebraic solution. We know that y is 17x cubed. That was our original function. f of x is 17x cubed. But we write it with this notation instead of the f notation. And then we switch the x and y. So we say x is 17y cubed. And then we solve this baby for y. So y cubed, just doing the algebra here, y cubed is 1 17th x. So y is the cube root of this. So I'm going to write it as 1 17th to the 1 3rd times x to the 1 3rd because the power of 1 3rd is the same thing as a cube root. And I wrote it that way because I'm about to take the derivative and now I just have a number here times x to a certain power. So now I can take the derivative with the power rule. So this the, the derivative here y primed is going to be 1 17th to the 1 3rd, the constant just stays out front, times 1 3rd times x to the power of this minus 1. 1 3rd minus 1 is negative 2 thirds. Okay, now we have to find the slope of the inverse function 
at x equals 17. So this is the inverse function and this is the derivative or the slope of the inverse function. So we just need to plug in 17 right there. So at x equals 17, in other words, y primed of 17 is going to be, this is 1 17th to the 1 3rd. I'm going to write it as 1 over 17 to the 1 3rd times 1 3rd, and then 17 to the negative 2 thirds. So that's 1 over 17 to the 2 thirds. And written that way, you can see in the denominator, 17 to the 1 thirds times 17 to the 2 thirds, those two pieces right there multiply together just to give us 17. So this is 1 over 17 times 3, which is 1 over 51. So of course it's the same thing we had over here. I personally very much appreciate the graphical solution in this case. Both are completely valid and you should understand both, but I think the graphical solution is a lot more elegant, a lot more intuitive, and also a lot faster. And again, whenever there are fewer steps, like you see here, there are fewer opportunities to make a mistake. It's uh, fairly easy, I think, to get lost in the algebra over here and a lot, lot more opportunities just to make a simple or careless error. So, But if you can understand both, you can do it one way and then check your work doing it the other way. Two different methods, of course, should always give you the same solution.